Okay. Can we give God club offering for tonight? Can you say within your heart, within our hearts, hallelujah, and we mean it. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. You know, God deserves all the hallelujahs that we could ever muster. You know, he's the only one in the whole universe who deserves hallelujah. And uh, no one else. The moment we give it to anybody else, it's idolatry. And it's an abomination to the ears of a holy, jealous, but loving God. Amen? So every time we mention that, we, 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 we declare our praise, hallelujah. Make it sure that in your heart and in your mind, it is for Him alone. The other thing is, you can never have a time uh, without reason to say it. Every season in our lives, whatever that may be, maybe we are in the mountaintop, maybe we are in the valley, maybe we are in the storm, maybe we are in the, in the river of peace and all that stuff. Every season, every place, every situation in our lives, whether in pain or blessings, there will always be a reason to say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. We do not choose time or situation or circumstances to say, God, thank you, praise your name. Because whatever reason we are, you are or I am or you are right now, right at this moment, maybe you're having disappointments, maybe you're having some moments of weakness or failures or things that you are praying for is not here yet and you're getting tired of waiting, all that stuff. Hey, take a break. Deep breathing. Remember that the Lord is never without reason not to be praised in our lives. Amen? He is always deserving of our praise. Isaiah, now uh, chapter 6, verse uh, 1 to the following. I will read this one. Um, one by one. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read my Bible. I'll go that, there later. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to the following. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and his robe filled the temple. Seraphim were standing above him. Each, each, each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet, and with two, uh, with it, he flew. One called to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of, his voice, of their voices, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and live among a people of unclean lips, and because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hands has a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who should I send? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am, send me. And he replied, Go, say to this people, Keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Dull the minds of these people. Deafen the ears and blind their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Understand with their minds. Turn back and be healed. Then I said, until when, Lord? And he replied, until the cities lie in ruins without inhabitants. Houses are without people. And the land is ruined and desolate. desolate. And the Lord drives the people far away, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tent will remain in the land. I want to repeat that. Though a tent will remain in the land, it will be burned again. Like the terebent or the oak with leaves a stump, then felled the holy seed 
is the stump. May the Lord bless the reading of this prophecy from the mouth of Isaiah. Isaiah said here in his uh, writing that this vision and this experience happened um, in the year that the king Uzziah died. Isaiah is uh, one of those prophets who uh, stayed for long, stayed alive for long. He, he served four kings. He served four kings. Uzziah is one of them. After Uzziah, um, king of, uh, of Judah, uh, Judah, after Uzziah died, he was uh, replaced by his uh, son Jotham, who did not really stay long. And then after Jotham, he was replaced by Manasseh. And after Manasseh, he was replaced by Hezekiah. Oh, during this time, um, from the time of Ju uh, Uzziah, Isaiah saw and experienced the height of power and abundance of the, king of, uh, of the kingdom of Judah, slowly fading under the threat of uh, foreign nations. We are bounty, uh, there is bounty in the, in the land of Judea during the time of Isaiah, in the first uh, part of his, house, of his life, uh, serving these kings. And yet, because during this time, as the bounty abounds in the kingdom, their trust in their God is fading. As the blessings poured to the kingdom, the, 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 the trust in the Lord slowly getting smaller and smaller. They, be, they look for the safety of their land from other countries, from other kingdoms, by putting together alliances and all that stuff. You know? Uh, um, doing things in their own way so that their kingdom will be preserved and continue to live in um, bounty. Meanwhile, ignoring the precepts of the Lord Isaiah saw this as gradual decline of God's uh, protection for the land. The blessing of the Lord, Isaiah can see, slowly fading because of what? Um, the actions and the hearts of the people. And it's always led by their king. Where the king goes, the kingdom follows. So in this time of, uh, of uh, Isaiah's ministry in the kingdom of Israel, uh, he mentioned specifically in verse 1, this uh, vision uh, he experienced during the time, during the year when Uzziah just died or maybe dying and stopped ruling as a king. So when these things happen, Isaiah, as a, as a messenger, as a prophet of God, can see slowly the, the blessing and the glory of the Lord starting to move away from the kingdom of Judah. This, the, the, the thing, the tragic thing about being a servant of the Lord during this time is that you can see it coming, you can do all the warnings uh, to the kings and the people, and yet when it comes back to you, uh, fruitless, no one listens to you, you know, it's so disheartening. It's so disheartening. But it happens during the time of uh, uh, the ministry of Isaiah. So Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to, ter, uh, to 31, actually, it, uh, to 13, uh, is, is a prophecy that will have to happen very closely. And then... The other part of the prophecy is, will happen in the long future. And the implication of this as well is that it, this kind of theme, you know, of the prophecy will not only happen in Israel and in, his, in her history, also this will be the future happenings with the Lord uh, during the time of Christianity. We will understand it later. So that is the background. Judah at this time, bountiful, no worries, no cares. You know? And, and the tragedy in Isaiah, Uzziah, Uzziah's uh, uh, kingship is that he's so full of himself that one day he even tried to offer uh, to the Lord himself. 
And so God struck, struck, um, struck him with um, leprosy and he died a leper away from his house, away from the king, uh, from the kingdom itself. He died an unknown uh, person and um, away from his kingdom and his family because he was a le leper. All right. So that's that's how we uh, that's what happened during the time when Uzziah died. Uh, very very sad. Uh, he was so uh, full of himself and pride, and um, he even forgot the the presence of the Lord. No one can offer this sin offering except for the uh, um, children of Aaron, uh, the the priest. All right. We'll go there. The title of our um, uh, topic today is this. Okay. What? Can we go back to our title? God calls and he sends. God calls and he sends. This is actually, um, we have a um, series that, gonna, that we're going to deal with for the Christmas season. And I take it as an a introdu introduction for that series. Because Christmas really is all about God send a uh, calling and god sending and he did it uh, specifically to uh, uh his only begotten son jesus christ he called jesus christ um, from his throne in heaven from his glory in heaven sent him to earth for a specific mission and uh, he did it willingly he did it lovingly and uh, faithfully uh, for our benefits okay so, um, our series for Christmas, as I understood, as Pastor Jerry uh, messaged to me, is that uh, Christmas in the eyes of the people or of, of, of the uh, people that is part of the Christmas uh, uh, story, uh, that will be dealt with uh, different uh, teaching. So, this is almost like um, a pre um, uh this is an introduction for that series. God is the God who calls, and not only that, He calls, He also sends. Okay? God calls, but that does not stop there. He calls because He wants to send people or, or messenger. Okay? So, we'll go to our, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, power thoughts. These power thoughts came from, uh, it won't go, <laughs> it won't respond, it won't respond as well. Power thoughts, okay, oh, before this one. All right. Can you look for that, uh, I'm sorry for this, uh, look for that uh, power thoughts, please. All right, okay, we have four power thoughts in here. Uh, all these uh, power thoughts or uh, main uh, ideas came from the 13 verses that we uh, read. When God calls, He expects response. When God calls, there should be response. And the response is two, two things. Either you will say, I agree, Lord, or you'll say, I don't believe it, Lord, I'll go. Some people will try to uh, stay in the, in the middle, like uh, Jonah. He did not say no, but he went away from where God is pointing him to go. So uh, that is considered still a no. But when God calls, he expects a response. The same is true with um, the kingdom of Israel. The, the same is true with all the messenger uh, in the kingdom of Israel. The same is true with the, the prophets. The same is true with the kings. The same is true with the uh, rulers, the future rulers. And the same is true with the apostles. The same is true with the Christians today. God still calls, and when he calls, he expects a response. As a church... The word church came from the word, um, Greek word ecclesia. Ecclesia is two words. Kaleo and God. Ah, God calls these people out from, of course, with a specific purpose. As a church, if you are telling yourself, I belong to a church, you are belonging to a group of people who are called out by God 
from somewhere for a specific purpose. That's as a group. Now there is also a calling up, we call personal calling. We have a calling, each one of us is called by God for a specific purpose. And so he expects response from each and every one of us. Um, I'll give two uh, examples of this in, uh, in the Gospel book of John. In John chapter 9, the God, um, uh, Jesus was, uh, was healing the blind. But before the healing of the blind, his uh, disciples asked him, Lord, whose fault is this that this guy was born uh, blind? Uh, maybe he's 30 years old. Maybe this guy for 30 years he was born blind. Whose fault is this? It must be his parents. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to blame uh, people, um, you know, maybe, maybe this person, but how can he be guilty when he was just a baby? When he came out, he's still blind. Jesus said, there is a, even the blindness, even the hardship, it's not easy to be blind, I believe. Even the hardship in the eyes and the hands of God who created these things, including that person, there is a purpose. And what was the purpose for this? God called him, created that blind person for a specific purpose. And that is what? How he will, how he will use, how he will use this, this uh, illness. No, he will use this illness to, to, to display the glory of God. So that people will know God as God who is a healer. Uh, God, there is no impossible. Even though a person uh, born blind, he can still give sight to that person. He created sight. So when they saw Christ heal that person, they were amazed. They were introduced to, to a God who can heal. In, in John chapter 11, uh, remember the, the incident of Lazarus? When Lazarus died? His, uh, his sisters told Christ, Lord, blame him in Christ. If you could have been here uh, earlier, because it's four days past already since they buried uh, Lazarus. He could not, you know, you could heal, Lord. So you could, hear, uh, you could heal people so he could still be alive, Lord. And then they start blaming uh, Jesus Christ for being late. But Jesus said, you know, I let it happen, this paraphrase. I let it happen for one purpose, so that they can glorify God. So that they will know God cannot only heal, they, they will know God as a God who can overcome sickness and illness, but more to it, God can resurrect person who died. Did you ever wonder why it took him four days? Why, why he delayed himself four days before he came, uh, before he came to uh, their presence? They buried him four days. It must be stinking already. It happened because it, he let it happen, I think, because, and I believe, because after four days, there's no, more, there's no more doubt that this person died already. If he came like they buried him today, uh, he came uh, later in the afternoon, he came and he said, uh, Lazarus came out. They might still think, oh, he just passed, uh, passed out. You know, he did not die yet. But four days? Four days, it is sure it's died. Uh, he died. Now here comes Jesus Christ commanding the, a dead Lazarus to come out. And everyone saw it. And what happened after that? They glorified God. They were stunned, amazed of how God, through Jesus Christ, his son, can re revive a dead person for two days, uh, for four days already. So he let it happen for a specific purpose. But when God calls, he expects an answer. When he calls the church, he expects the church to answer. What is the purpose of the church's calling? What is the purpose of the church's calling? We have to know that. Why are we church? Why did he put, this, uh, put us together? What is our purpose? We should know that. 
We should know our purpose as, as a church uh, here in Ponoka, part of the uh, Christ Corridor movement. What is our purpose? You know, we used to read it every Sunday. You know, what is our purpose? Who can say the purpose of this church? What? Sister Jubel? Oh, Sister Jubel, uh, the, the A student. <laughs> well, this, Amen. That is the purpose of this church, specific purpose of this church. God called us from wherever he called us. We're here right now. We're called ourselves member of this church. We are called for a specific purpose, and that's what we just read. You see, when God calls, he expects a response. Christ Corridor Ponoka, what is your response to this call? You will say, no, Lord, uh, I'm not part of the church or I'm not part of the uh, uh, boards or, or, or the ministry. You know, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not. All the excuses. When God calls, don't give him excuse. Just say yes or no. I'll give you the reason why later. But that's the reality is when God calls, he expects response. Next. Uh, next, please. It won't. When God calls, He prepares the responder. Uh, this is what good with God. He is not only will call you uh, because He has something you, for you to do, He will prepare you to. How can we say that? Uh, even if we look back to, uh, to Isaiah, Isaiah was not ready when God calls him. He said, I'm not ready, Lord, because my lips, my lips is unclean. Uh, there are so many theories why he said that. Maybe he likes to swear. Or maybe he likes to give his praise, uh, praise the Lord or hallelujah to other gods other than their God. It's so rampant during that time. It means to say that he knew in himself that his mouth was not being used for the glory of God. He knew that to himself. I am guilty, Lord. And if God is the one who calls you, you know that the one who calls you is holy. Before you can do anything for him, you have to be settled to yourself that you are ready. And God will make it happen to you. You see, Isaiah didn't know what to do. Lord, I, I am a man of unclean lips. The Lord knows the, the answer right away. It is God's initiative when he calls you, he will prepare you. Church, when God calls us, he prepares us already. Don't ever tell the Lord, Lord, I'm not ready. No, he prepared you already. And in his, in Isaiah's uh, uh, situation, what did, he, what did he do? Right there and then. He, he uh, commanded the seraphim to get a, a coal uh, from the altar and touch the lips of, uh, of the uh, messenger. And he told him, you know, now you're okay. Now you're cleansed. Now you are ready. Now you are prepared. But the action is not from Isaiah. The action is from the Lord. So the, this proves that when he calls you and you responded, don't worry about anything else. He will, in his grace and mercy, will prepare you so that you'll be ready to attend to the mission he will give you. Amen? Amen to that? Do you believe God is preparing you right now or has prepared you already for the purpose of your calling here in Christ Corridor? Amen. Do you have something to say, Brother Randy? <laughs> Amen to that. You know? But he prepares you. when He, he will not let, send you without uh, preparation. He will prepare you. Next. When God calls, he casts vision and purpose. Now, when he calls you, or when he called Isaiah, let's go back to Isaiah first, he gave Isaiah a specific mission. He has to go to these people, uh, you know, to say something to them. Have a message from the Lord. You know, he specified it. Isaiah, I called you, I prepared you for this purpose. God is a good um, um, master. He's a good sender. You know, he not only prepare you to do this task, but he will, will specify you uh, to you what is your task. That's what he did to the, to the church. 
before he left. That's why we have the Great Commission. This is God specifically telling the people, the, the, the church, this is the purpose of your calling. What is the purpose? You have to go to the whole world. Declare the gospel to the whole world. Teach them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I will be with you always. You see, he prepared them. Those first disciples, he prepared them for three years. And when the time is right, he specifically told them what is the purpose of their calling. He cast visions and he will let us understand the purpose of our calling. You know, Christ Corridor Ponoka, he called you, he prepares for you, and he also specified to us the purpose of our calling. Next. Last one. When God calls, He sends. When? In the timetable of God, He can say, uh, He can see that you and me are ready, or the messenger is ready. He knows that He's being called. He responded, yes. He specific, uh, specifically know the purpose of the calling. He, uh, after the preparation, God says that this is ready now. Lastly, last thing that He will do, He will send. There is a send-off, specific send-off, you know, Christ Corridor Ponoka. God sent us all uh, already for our purpose as a group. Now, individually, he has also specific calling for each and every one of us. My calling is not necessarily the same as the calling of, of Brother Edwin or Pastor Jerry or Pastor GR. That's why Pastor GR is so uh, uh, blessed by God to lead uh, young people to uh, do what they've been doing right now. Can we give God a club offering for that? <laughs> Being able to, to uh, offer their talents and their time to help a church in their worship, that's a blessing and an opportunity. You know, and uh, it happened because Bargiar knew the calling uh, specifically, specifically given for him. God prepared him for this, and he's just acting on it. All right? Same is true with those uh, young people who, uh, who said, oh, I, I'll, I'll join, uh, all that stuff. Brother uh, Buchoy here. Specific calling, when you understand that is your calling, don't give God any excuse. Go for it. You know, next, our uh, first uh, point. Our first point, please. First point, okay? Uh, it is in your uh, program as well. Relationship is fundamental. When God calls, He will always settle the issue of relationship. He will not call you for a specific purpose without that relationship with him settled. You know, that's why before you're going to be sent out to the world to preach the gospel, you or, and me should make sure in ourselves that we are believer of that gospel, we accept that gospel, we trust that gospel, and we, we claim that gospel in ourselves, and after that we are ready to share what we receive from the Lord. We cannot expect unbelievers to deliver the gospel that comes from God. The people God expects to deliver and share the gospel are the people who believe in it, who accepted it. But the question is, do you really believe the gospel? Another thing, did you accept it already? Do you have a personal relationship to the caller, to the sender? Do you, do you trust him? Do you have a relationship with him that you can, because of that relationship, you can recognize that, hey, uh, 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 Bar uh, Arnell, I'm calling you for this specific purpose, Arnell. Right? Yeah, youth, God is calling you 
But before you can say, Lord, I'm here, use me. First and foremost, we have to settle down. Do I have a personal relationship with Christ yet? That I can claim that calling. You know, when God calls, relationship is fundamental. You cannot go through other uh, part of the calling and the sending without settling this one. This is what happened to Isaiah. With it, with it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. What does it say uh, behind those lines? It says that God, in his initiative, has settled the issue of relationship between a sinful man and a holy God. God, in his grace and initiative during that time, for a specific time, Use the fire to clean the unclean lips of a messenger to prepare him for a specific purpose. And he will do the same to each and every one that he will call. Right? Next. Readiness is vital. Verse 6 to seven, uh, 7 and 8 says, With it, he touched my mouth and he said, This has touched your lips, so your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. You are good with God now. Now he, you, you, are, you are related to God now. You are part of his uh, uh, choosing per, uh, messenger to send for a specific purpose. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Say it. Send me. What does he say? In other words, here I am, Lord, I'm ready now. Okay, let's go for it. Right? Send me. The beauty of this is that it pictures actually, uh, in, my, in my mind, in the past eternity, while, while the Godhead were talking about the mission of saving the the, the world who is immersed in sin and is not worthy of the presence of God, but because of their love, because of their grace, they want to make sure that they can save these people and rescue these people. Two of them maybe talk, uh, three of them taking, uh, talking to each other. And you know, this is the problem. There is no way they can solve it themselves. There is a problem, so what we can do? And I, in my mind, I can imagine Christ saying, me, me, send me, send me. You know, you know, and then and then and then, uh, and then uh, God the Father said, "Oh, you volunteer, son, go." You know, I think that's the reason why Paul is saying in in uh, in uh, his writing that after the glorification of Christ, every knee should bow and call him Lord. Because of what he did. And his name will be above every name in heaven and on earth. Because he volunteered. That's why I think. Isaiah volunteered. You know, the Lord did not say to him, Isaiah, go. The Lord just gave him um, the idea, maybe. Planted the idea. He said, who we're going to send? Me, Lord. Me, me. Send me, Lord. Ako na lang, Lord. Right away. You know? Send me. Did you ever volunteer for God? Did you ever say to God, Lord, please. You know that person doesn't have Christ yet? I know. My friend doesn't have Christ yet. Lord, use me, please. Use, use me, Lord, to share the gospel to this person. Or, or your, your, your family, you know, do not have a relationship with Christ yet. Uh, Lord, please use me. I love this, um, uh, my family. Please use me, Lord. Use me. There's the beauty in it. The Lord has the right to command. In many ways, he will do that. He commanded his uh, disciples, go. You know, and they responded to their master. But there is a beauty when someone volunteers. That's why we appreciate volunteer people, especially in Canada here. There's a volunteers month, right? We celebrate volunteer uh, people, those people who just present themselves ready to serve without expectation of something in return. I just want to be involved. 
And I believe God is seeking the heart of those people who say, Lord, I just want to be involved. Prepare me, Lord. Send me. Use me, Lord. Did you ever use, tell the Lord that? Lord, I'm so, it's so, it's so heavy inside that I've been spending so many time, so many years being, being your, um, your, your son, your, your um, disciple, yet I don't know what to do. And all the time, the Lord is saying, this is the purpose of your calling. There is a need. There is a need for people to share the gospel. There is a need for people to lift their, to use their hands, to use, uh, to be used to serve other people who, who are in need physically. You know, within the church, outside the church, in the community, in the family, you know, there are, there's always a need. And please, don't, don't wait for God to command you. Understand and be in the shoes of Isaiah. Lord, here I am. Send me. Don't let me waste my time just sitting in the pews every Sunday. You know, because it's just a waste of time, really. An opportunity of the calling. Okay? Readiness is vital. Use your heart, your, use your mind, and desire it to be used by God. Tell the Lord, Lord, I am ready now. You prepared me for this. Next. Third, when you say yes to the Lord and he will send you, and you said you're ready, and the Lord said, okay, you're ready, I will send you. Relocation is essential. That's why it makes sense when God said, go. He said to Isaiah, he said, go and tell these people, no, 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 the purpose. You know, but there is the essence of the word go is that you have to move from point A to what? To point B to point C. Go around the world if you have to, if that's what the Lord's leading to you. But the main thing is when God calls and he sends you, it means to say you have to respond to that word go. Don't, don't tell the Lord, I'm ready. And the Lord said go. And you're just sitting there wherever you are. In the history of humankind dealing with God, who calls and who sends, there are so many, the Bible is filled with many examples of God's calling, and he let people and told people go. You know, and they move. And when you move, it means to say you have to sacrifice your... Um, goodness in the original life that you are before God calls you. He did it to Abraham. He had to leave his family. He did it to Moses. He had to leave the comfort of the wilderness with uh, tending the goats. You know, he did it to um, Gideon. Gideon was so, you know, a lucky uh, uh, farmer, you know, doing his things. He did it to the apostles. They are so, you know, enjoying their lives, uh, being fishermen. And all of a sudden, they get to know and have a relationship with Christ, who then again told, uh, told them, go. And they have to leave where they are to respond to the answer, to the calling of God. Maybe we're not talking here about physical uh, movement or relocations. Maybe, maybe God is challenging us, our mind and our hearts and our desire to move from being just a, a, a mere Sunday worshiper to a really Christian who is involved in God's ministry, in the heartbeat of God, in the pursuit of, of, of a desire to, to be involved in the heartbeat of God, you know, the calling of many souls for the Lord. Did you ever have a personal prayer to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to get involved in the business of calling people to you? Or sometimes we're not only getting involved in calling people to God. If we're not careful, the enemy can use us to shoo people out from the presence of God. God forbid. All right? 
So when God calls you and respond yes, be ready to relocate because it's essential. Either it is figure of speech or physical uh, response that you have to move away from certain places or you move away from your contentment of the current situation because you want to respond to God's calling to, to uh, get involved in his business of calling people to Christ, then be ready to move. When God said go, our, response, our expectation is we have to move. We have to relocate. Going away from our comfort zone. He said, go and tell these people, be ever hearing but never understanding, be ever seeing but never perceiving. Uh, this uh, particular calling is for letting the people know of their current state of mind. You know? They have all the availability of truth from God and yet they don't even hear it. They were explained to them. They don't understand it. You know, it seems like if you read the scripture, it seems like God is telling people that, you know, um, your, your mind is dull, your ears is dumb already, and you cannot receive and respond to the truth coming from God. And so God let you be in that current situation. That's the, 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 the uh, situation of Isaiah. Next, lastly, when God calls, in his purpose, in his mind, is always be the general picture of revival and restoration. The bottom line of God's calling and sending is revival and restoration. The bottom line why Christ has to travel to earth from the comfort of his throne and majesty in heaven to be with us and to offer his life for our ransom the real purpose of that is for the revival of, our, of the relationship of humankind to a holy God and to the restoration of that holy relationship that was broken because of sin from the beginning until now. God, until the time when Christ comes again, is not done yet with the business of revival and restoration. The news is, he wants you and me to get involved to it. He is inviting you and me to get involved to it. Now, if you, the calling comes to you as a command, please respond, say, yes, Lord. But if the calling goes to you with like a, the Lord presents a problem or an issue and, and, and you don't hear it, take it as a command, please take it as a, I volunteer myself, Lord. Please use me. And you know what? When you do that, he will use you. He will never say no. And though the tent remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the ter ter event and the oak leaves, it is, it's the trees that represent uh, Israel, uh, leave stumps. What's the purpose of that stumps? When they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. The stump will remain there, but even though it's stumped without leaves, without branches, that stump still alive. And one day in God's time, that plant will sprout leaves and branches and to, to bear fruits again. And that is the kingdom of Israel. And furthermore, that is the church that he bought by his own precious blood. Again, the big picture of the calling and the sending is for God to revive mankind to this holy relationship that was broken because of sin to himself, a holy God. And he wants and he invites those who are called to respond to the calling. In conclusion, he calls me with a purpose. He calls you with a purpose. I'm talking about not personal. I'm talking about now for each one of us. He calls me with a purpose. He accomplished with uh, this purpose. He can accomplish with me or without me. That's the thing. That's the thing. We have to accept that one. 
This is a purpose. There, there is a thing that needs to be done in the kingdom of the Lord. The Lord is trying to invite us to join Him. The truth is, if we say no, that purpose will still be accomplished by God because He will use other people. We are not only the only one in the world. So if, if I say no to Him, He will still accomplish His purpose with or without me. But woe unto me if I ignore the calling. Woe unto you if you ignore the calling that you clearly hear now and from the past. Why? Not only will I miss the greatest relationship I could ever have, but also lose the reason for my existence. He says here, a life missing purpose is a life without meaning. I was created for a specific purpose for me. My task is to listen and understand what is His will in my life by desiring a closer relationship with Him. The problem sometimes is this question always, classic question. Uh, Pastor Ramil, what is my, the will of God for me, for my life? I don't know. Ask the Lord. How will I know? Well, the word desiring a closer relationship is the key. How would you know the message from a person that would try to send you a message if you don't know that person, if you don't have a relationship with that person, a closer relationship with that person? Sometimes that person will yell at you, but you don't understand what he's saying because you don't know him or he doesn't know you. So there should be a desire to have a closer relationship because the closer your relationship be, the easier for you to understand the message. Amen? <laughs> That's why we always use this uh, comparison about husband and wife. I just did, <clears throat> we'll, we'll finish in this. I just did a, a wedding, a pre nuptial uh, uh, counseling last yesterday for Gajil and Juan. And part of the counseling was we emphasized that you know, uh, marriage is a, per, a process. Uh, in a relationship, is a process. And the longer you stay in that relationship, the more you get to know each other. The, the I wants and I likes. Right? That through the years of having a closer relationship, getting to know each other, even the wink of an eye will have a deeper meaning to the other party. Even to that, maybe the look, right? Maybe the look or the glance. <laughs> maybe the glance or maybe the... <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> uh, if you're a child and your parents, your, your, your father say, <clears throat> oops, maybe I did something wrong or may I say something bad. Or maybe just a closer look, you know, will have meaning to you. And you understand it because you have a closer relationship to that person. Same is true with the Lord. He is a personal God who wants and desires to have a closer relationship between you and Him, between me and Him. There is a purpose of that because the closer my relationship to Him, it's easier for me to determine and to, desire, to know the desire that He wants for my life. You have to have a closer relationship with God in your own way, in your own uh, style, in your own means and ways. The purpose of that so that you will be able to understand God as He talks to you personally in His own way for you personally. And then you can respond uh, accordingly. And then I could respond accordingly on my own way relating to him. I want to repeat that one. My task is to listen and understand what is his will in my life by desiring a closer relationship with him. The same is true with you. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, thank you 
Because you don't really, you don't really need us to accomplish your purpose. If we say no, you can still use other people, other means. One time you said, if, if, if people who have mouth and have hands and have uh, uh, their means to praise you will not praise you, the rocks, even the rocks will praise you, Father. Just reminding us that the invitation to get involved in your business of reviving people to you and restoring people to you is not a command that we have to respond because we have to, but it's an invitation to be with you and to enjoy a closer walk with you with this relationship, the greatest ever we could ever have in this world and after. Oh, Father, if, we, if you find in our hearts, Father, that we take it uh, not really seriously our relationship to you and the meaning and the depth of the calling you call us for, Father, help us to get to know you more in your own ways to each and every one of us. And Father, if you find us not prepared, we pray that you will use your angels, you will use your messengers to prepare us, Father, to respond to your calling. We cannot do it on our own. You know that, and we know that. And yet, thank you, Father, for your grace for giving us an invitation to respond to the calling, to a holy calling. And because we are not ready for ourselves, you even prepare a way for us. We cannot approach you because you are holy and we are sinners. And yet, because of the holy, precious blood of Christ, who washed away our sins, Father, with that, you prepared us to respond to the calling You've given us the purpose of being a church. Oh, Father, we are Christians. You called us from the world immense, immersed in sin. And you cleanse us with your blood. Each and every one of us, you have a purpose for this calling. We pray, Father, that you will reveal it to each and every one of us so that we could respond, respond uh, accordingly. Oh, Father, praise you. We are indeed a good, good God who will always call and who will always send. Praise be to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.